My name's Cormac from The Answer, and you're watching the Kerrang! podcast. This is our guide to our brand new album, Revival. So Waste Your Tears, I suppose, um, is a song that really came together in pre-production, literally two, maybe three weeks before we headed off to El Paso to record the album. Um, we had the chorus and we had the riff and we had a few different bits of the song that, that make it into the current version, but we just really needed to piece it together. And uh, I suppose that's where our producer, Chris Frenchy Smith, came in really handy. He was able to take a step back from it all and, and uh, give us some perspective, let us know what he thought really worked. And uh, yeah, the end result is definitely one of the, one of the, the strongest rockers in the album. What do you reckon? It's definitely one of the highlights. It takes your head off and it kicks in and it's uh, already a live uh, favorite this summer. It is. Um, I like the three-prong chorus attack on it. It's very catchy. And uh, some nice little vocal workouts at the end too, which, which I enjoy. Normally I'm not a big fan of the vocal stuff, but <laughs> in this track it's very good. Three-prong chorus attack. I like that pun. <laughs> there you go, folks. The song with the three-prong chorus three attack. Prong chorus. <laughs> Waste your tears. Use me, yeah, another another rocker, another one that hopefully will take your head off if you turn those speakers way up loud. Uh, I suppose uh, this song was one of the first ones we tackled in the writing process way back eight or nine months ago. Uh, Paul had, and I'd be right in saying you had that riff yeah. left over from Everyday Demons. Yeah, that came in, I think, pre-production uh, with JT on Everyday Demons. We broke into that riff, uh, just let off some steam, I think, and everyone seemed to like it, and it came back when we sat down to start writing Revival. Yeah, because I remember you went on about that riff for about the entire year between yeah, uh, between finishing Everyday Demons and starting writing I Revival. Know, TDK, one of those D90 cassette player things, and it was just the intro riff on that, and I remember constantly planning, finishing that song all the way through the ACDC tour. <laughs> yeah, I mean the lyrics for that one as well. Uh, the, 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 we had the music in place, and I, I needed to find something decent to write about. And it just so happened that whenever I was driving home from the rehearsal space that day, there was a, a particularly controversial political scandal broke out in Northern Ireland. And uh, I remember the the lady in question, oh. and I remember thinking, "This is a this is a rock and roll star inside a politician's body here, you know, and she deserves to have a, a song written about her." So. Uh, Luckily, I was able to take inspiration from uh, our somewhat complicated political situation in Northern Ireland, so it's not all bad. Um, Trouble was the first track we recorded for our album, uh, Revival. It is definitely got a nice nod to the blues in this one. It's got a great groove and personally probably one of my favourite tracks and Again, we've performed it live quite a bit over the summer, and it's in our set for our current UK tour starting uh, next week. So, uh, yeah, come see us live and check it out. Paul, I know there's a special place in your heart for this song. There is. It's probably one of my favourites on the record. I think it's a good summary of the answer and where we're at right now. And it's one of those songs where everyone asks, do you ride on the road? We always go, no, we don't. But actually, during the ACDC tour, the opening riff um, happened in the back of the bus when these guys were up making margaritas and partying with strippers and stuff. Who, me? Uh, well, maybe it was the absent member, I think. It's always a drummer. what he's doing right now, isn't it? And inspired by the, the shenanigans, I went back and came up with that riff and uh, took on from there. So. Yeah, because I remember... I didn't find out about this riff, people, until like a week before our producer, Chris, was coming over from America to start pre-production. And uh, I missed rehearsal that day, and I got all these texts from James, our drummer, and Mickey, saying, you want to hear the song that Paul's just 
you know, ripped out in the practice room there. I don't know where he's been, where he's been hiding it this whole time because we just done like eight months songwriting, <laughs> and Paul waited until the last week of the songwriting process to produce this song. So I thought, right, I better get down to the, the rehearsal space early the next day. And I came down, and Paul played it for me, and I thought it was great. And it really is one of those songs that I suppose it, it's one of those songs that ties it all together for the answer. It's got that lovely blues tinge to it. But it's a rocker as well, and it's almost got some pop sensibilities in there as well in the pre-chorus, and you know it's got nice kind of jangly chords that build up to this thumping, rootsy, ballsy chorus. And uh, yeah, it's it's one of those tunes that I think is a is a mark of the band who we are right now. It's definitely one for a bit of motion in the, in the front row, for sure. A bottle of whiskey in your hand, <laughs> a few smokes. So yeah, trouble. Check it out. It's uh, Nowhere Freeways, uh, I suppose a bit of a first for us, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's, uh, Big time. It's uh, our first answer duet, and it's one of those... More of one featuring another singer rather than a duet. Would you call it a duet? I'd call it a duet, yeah. yeah. Cause, well, we'll get on it's to it. It's a duet. It. It's a duet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's wrong with these boys? <laughs> featuring that, so like 1990s. Like, it's, come on, Mickey. It's... Uh, of first duet for us and we recorded the track and afterwards kind of remember Cormac looking at the lyric and it's it's very narrative and it almost has two people talking to each other within the track and we decided to pursue the the duet route which uh, turned out pretty cool I think yeah I mean it's definitely this album revival in general we we tried to push ourselves a bit further than we've gone in the past ask a few more questions and 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 just generally do things that that will surprise people and uh, obviously our first two albums there's there's no duets on there and uh, i think it just really adds a lovely flavor you know uh, maybe a third of the way into the album um and will hopefully turn a few heads as well and i think uh, it's a gamble that really paid off